accountability groups play a very specific role in this process. They are a very safe place for you to explore and ask the question first, am I meeting my weekly goals? If not, why? You also might be asking who in your group is feeling the same way you do. Maybe as you go about this process, you're discovering things about yourself where you really need some help. You might be asking people in your group, well, how are they dealing with rejection? How might they be dealing with a fear of picking up the phone call or call reluctance? And how do people move forward or gather courage when they feel afraid? This is where your small group can be very instrumental in coaching you and encouraging you and in praying for you. Also, in small group, you might be asking specifically what attitudes need to change, what behaviors need to change. People might notice as you prepare, for example, and share your strategy for an interview, that maybe your strategies are off, or maybe you need to change things up about the way you're trying to move things forward. Your small group can be an excellent sounding board for you to ask for advice and get input and to practice your strategies to move things forward or get them off dead center. The other thing small groups are great for is they create a great place for active listening. The lost art of active listening. That's right, this is a place and these are a people who will actively listen to you and try to help you understand the attitude that might be behind a root behavior that you're trying to overcome. It might reveal, as you interface with your small group, defeating behaviors that you need to address. And this provides you a safe place to explore the risks, the rewards, and to ask for help. This is a great group of resources that are really instrumental and important to moving forward, especially when used in conjunction with the MAP and YBR. So let me give you an example of a person that we know who went from fear to freedom, and this is based on a true story. I was able to counsel with a person who was struggling. Once they looked at their YBR, they noticed I just don't feel comfortable calling people. I obviously am having a hard time reconnecting with people. As I had a chance to visit with this person and talk to them about the results, the one thing I noticed in visiting with them is that they had the impression that nobody would help them and they felt very hesitant to ask for help because they couldn't get in their mind why anybody would help them. And when I asked this person to explain the emotions they felt, they said that when they picked up the phone call, they picked up the phone to call people, they felt ashamed, they felt afraid, and they felt vulnerable. These are the emotions that were impacting the person's ability to move forward. The behaviors that were a result of these emotions is that they avoided calling. Often when they got on the phone call with someone, they would apologize for calling, which made the other person feel also very uncomfortable on the call. In terms of body language, as I would visit with this person, I noticed they would often look down. There was little to no eye contact in my conversation with them. The person would kind of flush with color because they were nervous and they would touch their neck. In talking to me about calling or speaking with other people, have you ever been in a conversation where somebody keeps grabbing their neck? That is a classic indicator that they're very uncomfortable and this is a defensive move to actually protect a vulnerable place on your body. Um, when people touch their neck, often it's a sign that they're very uncomfortable. So her thoughts were that nobody would help me. Her emotions were that I'm ashamed, I'm afraid, I feel vulnerable. Her behaviors were I avoid interacting with people or calling them, I apologize unnecessarily. Her body language was that she's vulnerable and she's deflecting. And when I really had a chance to get to know her, there was a lie that she believed. And this is what's really sad. She believed that nobody would take time to talk to her because she really wasn't worth knowing. In working with this wonderful person, I reminded her how much God loved her and God loves her 
and has a plan for her life. Jeremiah 29 11 tells us, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not to harm you, plans for your future and a future filled with hope. When this person started meditating on the Word of God and asking for prayer and confessing her fear, she was able to move past it and she was able to look at the lie that the enemy told her that she was unworthy and say, no, in light of biblical truth, I am worthy. People do like me. I believe I should take risks because I'm a worthy person. I'm a person who Jesus died for and I'm redeemed. That's an example of how a person, if you look at your attitudes and behaviors, you can move through anything that might be holding you back and move forward, but you have to be authentic with yourself. You need people to be transparent with. And this is the value of a small group. A small group can provide you an excellent sounding board and it can lift you up and help you move anything, move through anything that might be holding you back. So forces that work for you, as you go through and look at your YBR, understand that forces that work for you include positive thinking, knowing that you can do hard things. Our small groups provide safe places for you to internalize your results. It also provides you a safe place for people to hold you accountable. If you're targeting five whites per week and you're hoping to meet with three yellows, two blues, and a red, your accountability partners in your small group, you can report your weekly progress and they can challenge you to step up or share what's working for them and encourage you to move forward. Your small group and your, your YBR also allow you to think on purpose and prepare with great intention. So I'm gonna say that again. You can think on purpose and prepare with great intention. Your YBR enables you to look at what the next action is, what the next goal is in terms of moving that opportunity forward, and your small group enables you to practice in a safe place your, your attitudes, the skills and behaviors you need to move forward. I wanna to talk to you about how your small group can really encourage you. If you are part of a shared faith community, they can help you focus on resources that can help you understand who you are in Christ. There is a resource, if you Google knowing who you are in Christ, the first thing up is going to be a resource by Joyce Meyer Ministry that outlines every single biblical promise that the Bible makes when you're a Christian of who you are in Jesus Christ. And I'm just gonna read some of these to you because these are extremely powerful meditations. I've received the power of the Holy Spirit and he can do miraculous things through me. I have authority and power over the enemy in this world. That's Mark 16, 17 through 18. I'm renewed in the knowledge of God and no longer want to live in my old way or nature before I accepted Christ. That's based on Colossians 3, 9 through 10. I am merciful. I do not judge others. I forgive quickly. As I do this by God's grace, he blesses my life. This is Luke 6, 36 through 38. God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. That's Philippians 4.19. In all circumstances, I live by faith in God and extinguish all of the flaming darts and attacks of the enemy. That's Ephesians 6.16. I love this. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do whatever I need to do in life through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. I love this, I am chosen by God and called out of the darkness of sin and into the light and the life of Christ so that I can proclaim the excellence and greatness of who he is. That's 1 Peter 2, chapter 9. And finally, I am God's work, workmanship, created in Christ to do good works that he has prepared me to do. That's Ephesians 2.10. I am a new creation in Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. 
I just love this. As I hear God's word, I do what it says and I am blessed in my actions. That's James 1.22. Do you know the word of God? Do you know what it says about you? Can you use what the word of God says about you to look at how you might be performing in your efforts to create opportunity? And can you pray for yourself actively? Can you say to other people, hey, I'm struggling with believing I'm a new creature in Christ. I need help to believe I am worthy for the role I'm applying for. Please pray for me. We had a gentleman in one of our small groups a couple weeks ago come to me and say, you know, I am 42 years old and I know uh, I've missed the boat in life. I chose a career path that was safe, but I'm miserable and I believe I should be doing something else. In fact, I believe I should be a meteorologist, not a marketing director. And I need prayer to align my skills with where God needs me today because I feel like I've missed the boat in my life and my career calling. Those are the kinds of true life, authentic, transparent confessions that come out of small group and help you ask for prayer and encouragement from people who can help you go through this place of transition in your life. There are so many great resources for you. I encourage you to take a look at the Hillsong channel, which is 16.2 on uh, your extended channel selection. The Christian broadcast, K-Love, puts out great music. The Purpose Driven Life is a fantastic book by Rick Warren. JoyceMeyer.org has excellent free podcasts and broadcast resources that are broadcast right now all over the world. And then knowgod.org, K-N-O-W, God.org is also another great resource. I encourage you to really stop and think about your map, your YBR, what they say about you, and ask the question, you know, who can I turn to as a small group to really help me move forward and hold me accountable toward my goals? This is the value of a small group. And if you don't have one, please go to economyofone.com, sign up for our newsletter, join up with one of our small group meets. We meet every Thursday at 6.30 Central Time. There is a Zoom invite link in our newsletter broadcast that you can click on to register for the call. It's in that call that I will take your information and I will assign you to a small group. These small groups meet weekly and they're all using the same tools. They all have the same language so that you guys can measurably help yourself move forward. Imagine it's kind of like Weight Watchers for people who are unemployed or trying to start a business. Either way, please consider what a small group can do for you. Up next is module seven, leaving a good footprint. This module will discuss with you exactly how you can control the internal dialogue that companies or individuals are having about you as you go through the YBR process. We will coach you in this particular module how to, to craft digital footprints or addendums to your resume and customize detailed case studies that help you summarize your value how you've accomplished in similar business settings, what they need done and done profitably within the context of their culture. Their question is, why you? Why are you a great candidate? Why are you qualified to solve our problems? We're gonna help you answer that question, why you? Creating an excellent digital footprint that always leads back to you within organizations and uniquely qualifies you. Finally, I would ask that as you do your homework, <laughs> you actually uh, download the handouts for module four, five, six, and seven on the Economy of One website. It's one thing to download them, it's another thing to do your homework. You're gonna get out of this course what you put in. So please do your homework. I've shared with you great ideas, but if you don't implement those ideas and then hold yourself accountable, it doesn't matter, right? So all the information in the world doesn't matter if it doesn't get within you and start revealing to you how you need to change to get to the next level of where you wanna go. We're looking at information, 
we're looking at revelation that comes when you use that information. So I've told you all about the YBR. Let's say you fill out the YBR and you've actually got nothing. There's nothing you're really pursuing. And you're wondering why you're stuck and feeling frustrated. Maybe the YBR has revealed you really don't have anything in your pipeline and you need to get moving. And there needs to be a sense of urgency moving forward. I've done this assignment with people before where they realize, my gosh, I'm running out of runway. Uh, my corporate benefits package that was part of my layoff is running out and I really need to get started. This process is revealing to you the next step. It's revealing to you attitudes, behaviors, skill sets that you need to move forward and we are providing for things. I encourage you to join a small group, sign up for our newsletter, if you're interested in being a part of a positive online community, join our Facebook group. And I also encourage you to link in with me. If you're on LinkedIn, please look me up, Elizabeth Allen, and I'd love to link in with you. I look forward to getting to know you and I just thank you so much for the opportunity to be part of your team. I'm gonna pray for you now at the conclusion of this. All right, so let's bow our heads and pray together. Heavenly Father, I just lift up this wonderful person who is with me on this journey. Lord, I have given them a big assignment with the MAP and YBR. I pray, Father, you give them the strength and the focus that they need to accomplish this task. I also pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit reveal to them what they need to do to move forward. If they need to join a small group, I pray that they will either ask their friends for help or reach out to us at economyofone.com to help them find a small group. I pray that they will have the courage to believe that other people deeply care, want to actively listen, and really want to help them transform their lives. Lord, I know the future you have for these great people, and I pray that you just nurture their faith in themselves and their faith in you to move them forward. And I thank you, God, for all that you're doing in their lives. I pray you bless them now, that you meet their financial needs, that you heal them in their spirit and in their body, and that they just feel your holy presence with them now. These things I ask in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So I thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you for Module 7, Leaving a Good Footprint. Thank you.